Hello there. Well, this is my carpet. And I know you're thinking to yourself, can this video possibly get any more exciting? And if it's any consolation, right now I'm thinking the exact same thing. But bear with me. Although my next video may well be about my curtains. So as I said, this is my carpet. I bought this in a charity shop in Glasgow's Argyle Street about a decade ago um, for just £12. I'd just moved into a, a flat and I didn't have enough money for a fitted carpets and all this carry on. Um, this carpet is nine foot square and it was just the job for carpeting one room and uh, around about the edges of the carpet where the carpet didn't cover the floorboards I just stained the wood and uh, in the end it just looked really good saved myself a fortune you know um, but getting it home from the charity shop was just not that easy uh, at nine foot square when you roll it up and put it over your shoulder uh, both ends are almost hitting the ground so it was a bit of a struggle um, but I managed to get it on the train <laughs> you know, at no point did anyone stop me and say hey wait a minute where, where are you going with that but I got on the train and I wasn't in anybody's way I was blocking anything um, but I, I do remember when I got off the train at Ireland there was a police car coasting slowly by and the way that they do when you wonder if they're perhaps checking just checking you out, you know they're maybe making sure that no one was roaming the streets with a dead body rolled up on the carpet <laughs> but um, I got it home and you know, unrolled it and checked it over and it was in perfect condition there was no stains or holes or anything although I did notice that there seemed to be an awful lot of what looked like sand coming out of it. Oh, where's all this sand coming from? It visions of maybe a, some sort of magic carpet that come from Persia and been in the Sahara Desert or something like that, you know. But then, once I had a, a proper look at it, uh, I discovered that on the, the rear was this I had bought myself a Templeton's carpet, made in Glasgow. And this is where the story begins. The building just behind me, just at the edge of Glasgow Green, is what we have come to associate with Templeton's carpets. It was designed by William Leeper and built between 1888 and 1892. Um, set to have been modelled on the Dogs Palace in Venice. For me, it, it sort of resembles a large brick carpet. Because all these different coloured bricks have been put together in a particular design, which is just not unlike the way that they put the carpets together. If you look at some of the carpet designs, you'll see that the, the illustration was divided up into a lot of little tiny squares so that they could get the design and uh, the colours uh, correct on the carpets. It just very much looks like that behind me. It was apparently um, the fourth design that uh, James Templeton uh, submitted to Glasgow City Council uh, for, the, for the building here. Um, the, the first three designs were rejected, they must have looked a bit bland. Um, 
you know, the late 1880s, pretty much the Victorian heyday where every building was architecturally stunning. So having had his first three designs rejected, uh, James must have thought, right, well, we'll let you sort this out. Uh, we'll submit a design that has essentially got bells on it. A singing and dancing design, which is what we could see behind us. And obviously it was, it was passed by uh, Glasgow City Council. It's a real uh, architectural asset to the city. But this is not where our story begins. This is where it actually all began, here in Paisley. For in 1829, James Templeton started manufacturing shawls. When you look at our mid-19th century Ordnance Survey map, you'll see that the area just on the other side of the river, more or less uh, on the other side of the river from uh, Paisley Abbey, uh, was given over to the manufacture of shawls. There was any number of buildings, um, shawl warehouses, shawl finishing works, shawl handloom factories, just the whole area between uh, Forbes Place and Bridge Street was practically all concerned with the making of shawls. Paisley got rich on thread but also got rich on shawls, paisley shawls. There was a decline in the market for shawls in the 1850s. James Templeton probably saw this coming many years before. He also saw the potential for simply transferring some of the processes involved in the weaving of shawls, in particular with regard to chenille, to the manufacture of carpets. And so, in the 1840s, Templeton moved to the Carlton area of Glasgow, a district awash with shawls, to focus on making chenille carpets. James Templeton and Company was born. The firm continued to grow and expand, moving from the original site in King Street in the 1850s to William Street, now called Templeton Street, and an additional factory in Crown Point Road, all in the east end of Glasgow. This was the Industrial Revolution, and weaving processes that were once carried out by hand were slowly becoming mechanised. It was during this period of growth and expansion that a disaster befell the company. During construction of the, the building that we can see here in 1889, uh, part of it collapsed uh, during some very high winds and it fell into an adjacent weaving shed that, that was still in use and uh, a large number of women ended up getting trapped and 29 women, mostly young women and in some cases girls, died during the tragedy. There was at one time a, a memorial garden uh, built at the junction of London Road and Tobago Street and in many ways that, that memorial garden is still there today, although I, I think what we can see today at that junction where names of some of the girls have been placed on a path and uh, there is a verse on a wall, I, I think that's what you might term a recreation of the original memorial garden 
I could be wrong here, I'm not 100% certain, uh, but I think in the original memorial garden there was a, a brass plaque with a verse on it. Uh, and I think that garden was erected many years after the tragedy, probably in the 1950s, I, I suspect. And uh, the verse on the, the plaque and indeed the verse on a stone tablet that is on the site today um, is absolutely lovely. And I'm going to read it to you just now. Green buds for the hope of tomorrow, fair flowers for the joy of today, sweet memory, the fragrance they leave us as time gently flows on its way. It's just such a simple yet beautiful verse written for such a tragic event. Maggie Shields was one of the 29 women uh, who were killed during the tragedy. She was just 22 and um, she is buried in Jane Field Cemetery or East, the Eastern Necropolis. I did try to locate the grave. I knew roughly where it should be in that cemetery, but an awful lot of stones, gravestones, had either fallen over or been kicked over. And uh, the, the graveyard as a whole was in a pretty tragic, sorry state. Uh, so I, I couldn't locate the gravestone. As human beings, we've always liked things at our feet that were nice to look at and not just functional. We've always wanted something that covered that bare earthen floor or those cold wooden floorboards that was essentially pretty to look at. Examples of that can be seen throughout time, with Roman mosaic flooring, medieval floor tiles or Victorian floor tiles. 19th and 20th century carpets were no different, and it may be of some interest to show here some images of the whole process, from original drawings to numbered pattern layout and the physical manufacturing of the carpet itself. The following images are related to the Stoddart Templeton Design Archive and may not all be directly related to Templeton's but they will give you a good idea of some of the aspects of the whole carpet-making process and how the centuries-old trend for floor coverings that looked pretty remains to this day.
Do you want some salt or pepper? No, no, that's fine as it is. Thanks very much. No Cheers. A bowl of cauliflower soup. Exactly what is needed on a very cold day like this. So I'm inside what was once Templeton's um, old carpet factory. It's now West Brewery, a uh, good place for some excellent beer and uh, excellent food. This was a good place for a carpet factory. When it was built, it was right in the very industrial heart of uh, the east end of Glasgow. It was just um, chock a block with industrial buildings of various types. You also had Glasgow Green Railway Station just outside there. Um, so you could employ workers from essentially all over the city. to tell you that is delicious, absolutely delicious. Who'd have thought the humble cauliflower could taste so good? Wow! These days, the railway station has gone, and so has Templeton's carpet business. But we still have this magnificent building, and I still have my carpet. A Templeton's carpet, made in Glasgow. Cheers.